Hello friends, and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen, where we're staying in from the cold and getting cozy with this rich, creamy coconut curry chicken, made vegan as usual. It's a mild curry, inspired by noisy Hong Kong-style cafes, retreating from the rain and staying out late with friends. It's rich, with a hint of sweetness, enveloping perfectly cooked potatoes and carrots with a satisfying amount of protein. In our case, I'm using my high-protein chickeny chickla seitan, which soaks up the flavors while still retaining its meaty texture. Have this on its own, or over steamed rice. Either way, you'll have a satisfying meal in about a half an hour. So, if you're gonna have rice, let's get it started first. I already showed you how to make rice on the stove many times, including in last week's vegan chicken and broccoli stir-fry, so please check that out if you need directions. And while it's cooking, let's pull out all the ingredients from the pantry and fridge so they can be measured, chopped, and whatnot. Starting with my chickeny chickla seitan. If you missed the tutorial on this one, you've got to check it out because it is my ultimate, most versatile, plant-based chicken alternative. And it's the perfect protein in this dish. The texture helps to soak up flavors without getting soggy. It's meaty and savory, and you're going to want it for all your chickeny chickless dishes. Of course, if you are one of my gluten-free friends, please feel free to sub in the protein you prefer, like store-bought vegan chicken, pressed tofu or tempeh, or even beans. The wonderful fruit, the more you eat, the more you, well, whatever you choose. Measure nine ounces or about 250 grams, which is about two heaping cups of one inch cubes. A little more or less, it's really up to you. Then for our root vegetables, I chose yellow potatoes. They are waxier than russets, and hold up better in simmering dishes. Peel them, then chop, about one inch pieces. And the same with our carrot. Now we have about eight ounces or 225 grams each, though a little more or less according to your preference and maybe just what you have on hand, it really makes little difference, it's up to you. Then let's get into aromatics with this beautiful white onion. By the way, has anyone else had issues with buying good onions this year? I swear, every other onion I get turns out to be no good. So if you have any good onion buying tips, I would love to hear about it. Seriously, just leave me a comment. You're gonna just roughly chop the onion. I'll need just half for the recipe, which will give me about one cup chopped. Put that aside and slice a quarter inch thick piece of ginger about an inch or so in diameter. This chunky piece will be easy to remove from the finished curry at the end. And while I don't really think you need to, I removed the skin too. I don't always remove it, but when I do, I love to do it clumsily and dangerously with a big Chinese knife. Finally, just one clove of garlic should do it. Smashed, then minced. And now, along with our sauces, seasonings, and coconut milk nearby, we can head to the stove. In a large pan or wok, melt a tablespoon of coconut oil over high heat. When it's very hot but not quite smoking, turn the heat down to medium high and add the onions immediately. Since the wok was so hot, they'll get a little char, but it won't be too much. And they'll become translucent and sweet in about five minutes. Make some room and add our cubed chickeny chickla seitan to get some color. Continue to cook using medium high heat. And a minute later, you'll see the bottoms have browned quite nicely. Toss the seitan around so more sides can get browned. We don't have to do all the sides, just two or three is good. Now, just before I add the minced garlic and ginger, I'll make room and lay down a wee little more coconut oil because we're not afraid of oil around here. And a few seconds later, add the carrots and potatoes, plus one tablespoon of Madras curry powder. I uh, might be pronouncing that wrong. But anyways, toss that around for a few seconds so the spices can bloom a bit. And then add one and a quarter cups of vegan style chicken broth or vegetable broth, it's up to you and what you have on hand. Then you can turn up the heat and let this come to a boil. 
Once we're here, turn down the heat so you can have a steady simmer and you can cover this and let it cook for 15 minutes. Make sure to adjust the heat to ensure a low steady simmer. And while it's simmering, I'm going to prepare one more ingredient, cilantro. It's the finishing touch that I cannot do without in this coconut curry. But if you are someone for whom this lovely herb is not so lovely tasting, please just leave it out. As for me, I want to make sure I have lots. After 15 minutes, uncover and check the potatoes and carrots. If the potatoes can be easily split with chopsticks or a spoon, and the carrot is easily poked through as well, I call it done. Then we can add a small can of coconut milk, the kind that has this big hunk of coconut cream that floats the top and solidifies when you refrigerate it, not to be confused with coconut milk beverage. And we'll plop the whole thing in. That's 5.6 ounces or 165 milliliters. Then one tablespoon of brown sugar or a one-to-one -one sweetener of your choice. Two tablespoons of Shaoxing wine, which adds an authentic flavor, but you can leave it out if you want. Add a teaspoon of soy sauce. And finally, an eighth teaspoon of white pepper and salt. Stir and let it simmer for another five minutes for all the flavors to mix mingle and get reacquainted with each other. And as the last touch to thicken up this curry sauce, pour in a little cornstarch slurry made from one tablespoon each of cornstarch and water. Now it's looking nice and thick, though you can play with this texture by adding a little more broth to make it thin or slurry to make it thick. When you're satisfied with it, turn off the heat and give it a taste. I think it should be just right by now but you can always adjust the salt and pepper to taste. Add your own flair, if you will. Your rice should be ready by now, so serve it up. And ladle over your rich and creamy, deliciously fragrant vegan coconut curry chicken. I mean, just look at that glossy sauce, the tender hunks of sweet carrot, and creamy potatoes, and savory, meaty, chickeny, chickless seitan. It's what cozy Chinese comfort food dreams are made of. Of course, I must top this with fresh chopped cilantro. And you do you. But whatever you do, make this soon and show me on Instagram. Just tag me at Mary's Test Kitchen. Then it will be like having this cozy dinner together wherever we are and whatever restrictions we're living with in these seemingly endless times. So go over to marystestkitchen.com for the printable recipe and enjoy the new faster loading speed. Well, I just made a change behind the scenes so it should look the same but load much faster. Let me know what you think later. For now, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more delicious plant-based meals. Plus, turn on notifications because you're going to want to make the next recipe I have coming up ASAP. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. Bye for now.